Hey there everyone, Atesh here, back again with another video and welcome to the series on React Native. Again, of course, powered and sponsored by Hashnode, the amazing platform to write your journey that how you're becoming developer. Maybe you know something really interesting to share with your own community, which is developers community. So in this video, we are going to be creating a kind of a mini app for learning about the navigation. This will help you in future videos so that you can smoothly create all these apps. Now, uh, I have already created uh, this project here. This is really simple, absolutely basic. Haven't touched anything. Uh, so it's just a bare minimum project. How it initialized as the fresh project. I always test out my project. As soon as I create them, I try to run them so that at least there is no default problem in them. So that's what I've done in this one. Now moving in, uh, we'll be using a couple of things. So I wanted to share a little bit more study of documentation with you. So there is a type checking of screens as well. Like uh, in order to type check your screens, we need to annotate this. So basically what it's saying is maybe sometimes you are bringing some data with your screens. Maybe there is some, uh, because what happens is there is a route props uh, from which you can extract some data. I'll show you how you can do that as well. But this is the way how we can actually uh, use that. So there is this native screen, uh, native stack screen props. And through this, you can actually pass on whatever, how many screens you have and you can pass some props into them. So like here it is passing up something or undefined, uh, or we can pass on some this guy, whatever the data you want to pass in. We'll definitely talk about it, not in this video, but I'll surely share you that how you can pass on this data. Now, a couple of interesting stuff that how we are going to get started with this. So getting started here in the fundamental, it says getting started. If you click on this and scroll a little bit, this is how it says that you can install the React Native uh, here and we need to install a couple of dependencies as well. Uh, not here, uh, these dependencies. Uh, these are, the second ones are for Expo, so we are not using Expo. These are the ones that we need. So React Native screens and safe area context, we'll be using them. So first let's go ahead and copy this. Let's go back and let's go ahead and install this. And clean this up. No cleaning. Let me just restart my terminal. Uh, probably delete this, restart. Yeah, that's nice. So let's install this one first. And shouldn't take much time. There we go. Ah, it's small one. And we also need uh, this one. So just skip the Expo one because we are not using Expo. And we are going to be using this one. So let's go ahead and uh, copy this. And let's go ahead and install this one as well. Now, you might be thinking that this is all that you need to install it and that is what something is missing in the documentation. So we won't be using just the navigation, we'll be using the stack as well. So if you go up into the navigators and look at the stack, uh, look at here, there is a separate installation if you want to use the stacks or something like that. So uh, we will be using the stack, so go ahead and copy this. So this is somehow, they consider this as a different, want to have a stack, you want to have a drawer, uh, so there is a separate implementation of each one of them. We'll be just going with the stack as, as of now, but you'll understand the concept and you can move on to different one as well. So let's go ahead and copy this stack as well. Uh, this is interesting uh, take on the documentation. All right, so we have uh, these one getting installed. All right, so this should be all that we need. Now we're gonna go ahead and create a couple of screens first and then we're gonna one by one talk about them. So for that, Let's go ahead and create a new folder in the root directory itself. Let's call this one as SRC. There we go. Now in the SRC, let's go ahead and move our app.js, app.tsx. So into the source, please move it. And yes, please update the imports as well. Now, as of now, we can see in the app.tsx, nothing is getting changed, all right. We are going to go ahead and create a folder. We're gonna call this one as screens. This is how you will be proceeding later on as well. In this, we're going to create two files. Uh, the first one is going to be home.tsx. Of course, this is a home folder or the home screen. And let's just say, for example, we have another screen. We're going to call this one as details screen. All right, so let's go ahead and get a home screen. So let me go ahead and react native functional export with styling. Yep, this is much better. I've been writing this uh, for a quite some time, but I thought let's go ahead and do this. Okay, in the home, we are not going to be doing much, but at least let's put up some of the styling that we are going to use later on. Uh, nothing too much, we can write them on the go. So first is we need container. This container is not going to have much. Uh, let's say flex is going to be one. Uh, we'll have align item center. 
and we are going to have justify content as well which is also going to be center so we are just putting everything on the center and also one more which is going to be small text not like that we are going to have small text t should be capital again totally up to you all right all we have to do is add a color that is going to be black so depends on what mode your uh, screens are running we'll be keep on changing just to see this is just to make sure that we are able to see the color that's it all right right now we have nothing in this screen this is just a basic bare minimum component we'll come back onto this one similarly in the details view as well uh, react native functional uh, export with styling now this one also is not going to have too much we'll be having just the same exact same styling so in fact we can actually copy and paste this one so we'll just copy this as you can see, this is just the app, boilerplate app, so that we can learn about the things, how we can configure these React Native stacks and all of that. All right, so let's just go ahead and save this one. All right, so now we have two screens. We are going to close this one. Right now, we don't expect anything. The first configuration happens actually is in the uh, app.jsx. We do nothing in the index.js because this is just a routing that is happening up here. So let's open up our app.jsx. So app.jsx, too many stuff is here let's go ahead and clean this uh, there's too much going on in here save this and remove this and probably this we don't need this entirety of the thing function and we are also going to remove this and status bar scroll view let's get rid of all of this and probably all of this and we don't need this style and stuff and technically we won't be doing any styling here so we can actually remove this we won't be doing any styling we don't have anything to style here we just have an app which we are going to be uh, wrapping around the things all right so a couple of things first and foremost let's import the libraries which are important for us for navigation uh, we'll keep this props with children for a moment but we are going to work on with that let's import here so these are this is how you start when you want to have a navigation first and foremost we want to import uh, something from a react native navigation oh, no suggestions probably with the add the rate navigation a native so what does this guy actually gives us this guy gives us a container so navigation is if you think about it navigation container is nothing more we wrap our app into uh, this container this container allows us to have information that hey these are selected routes and you can move on to any of the routes into them this is what we need now also we are going to need one more thing which is uh, again going to come up from the stack so let me go ahead and import this is also going to be useful just in a minute i'll show you the implementation as well so this one is going to come up from the stack what we need from here is a uh, create let me just show you that create stack uh, navigation create native no not this one create stack navigator uh, is this updated let me just quickly check this whether this is updated or still needs to be the previous one nope i checked the documentation again and this is sometimes you'll be also doing i was importing it from the uh, the stack this is doesn't comes from here this actually comes from a uh, react navigation uh, native stack did we install it or probably not react navigation let's just check it uh, quickly into package.json uh, we should be installing this uh, we actually installed the stack we should be installing the native dash stack so probably i've done something wrong here uh, let me just go ahead and open this up quickly what did we install uh, we installed this stack actually we wanted to have a, a native dash stack native dash stack and this should be installed so a minor bug no issues this happens to every developer this is what we need uh, we can uninstall this one as well so we can go ahead and say that hey this is the stack that we don't need so let's go ahead and try to uninstall that although you can leave it there as well but i don't want to keep unnecessary dependencies uh, it will confuse everybody up here so now that we have this guy uh, what we need is let's try it again yes this is the one uh, Rea create react native stack navigator i'll show you the implementation as well nothing to be worried about okay after this we will be also importing our screen so let's go ahead and grab the screens 
Uh, first one is actually the home. So let's grab the home screen. The second one that we need is details. So let's go ahead and grab the details and remove this. So we are going to go ahead and uh, move this here. Okay, so now we have the navigation stacks that we need to provide the navigation and we have the way up or the path where we want to navigate uh, for this one. Now, one more thing which I discussed just with you in the, uh, in the documentation that we need something known as a root stack parameter. So we'll be actually creating this one as well. So let me go ahead and create that and then I'll show you that why it is being required. And again, in case you forgot this, this is exactly uh, what we are creating. Let me show you that. Yeah, this is the one. So we are creating this root stack parameters. In fact, we can copy and paste this one. This is just to make sure that we have exact type that we can pass on. So I'll just copy and paste this one. So let's go ahead and paste this. So we'll export this type as well because we'll be using it in other screen as well. So root stack param list and we have home as undefined. That is okay. We don't have profile or feed. I'll show you how you can extract data like this way as well. We have detail screen. Uh, which we are going to provide something. So let's just say we are going to send it as uh, product ID. I'll show you the way. And all we write is a uh, what data type that is coming up. We don't pass on exact data. We just pass on that, hey, this detail screen expects that that data is going to come up, which is going to be product ID, which is which can be a type of string. And in the home, the idea is that uh, we will expect nothing. So this is just basically a precaution that, hey, uh, type checking. Since we are using the TypeScript, we are just having the type checking. Now, uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use this uh, create native stack navigator. Let's go ahead and copy this. This is going to be an interesting line here. So let's go ahead before the app. Let's go ahead and write one line here. We're going to go ahead and create a stack. This stack will come up from the create native stack navigator. And uh, this is how you go ahead and create this. But it's not any navigator, not any stack navigator. Remember, there are multiple types of navigation. We have stack navigation, we have drawer navigation. So we are explicitly mentioning that I want to use the stack navigator. But as I'll move on to different screen, these screen may expect some data to be passed on to him. These data, what type of data that they can expect? That's why exactly we have created this root stack param list. So we're going to copy this and say that, hey, the data that can come to you is going to be of this type. This is exactly the need of why we are actually bringing this one up here. I hope now this is clear, step-by-step -step process. As we write more code, it will get much, much clearer. Now, after this, in this return, we don't need any safe area or anything like that because this app is now not responsible for throwing you to any screen at all. The navigation is going to be responsible for that. But of course, we need one, app, one screen to be as home or the initial screen that, hey, just as the app loads up, load this screen. So that's why we actually use this. For all of this, we have actually imported the main thing, which is navigation container. This is what we need. Now, inside this navigation container depends on what type of navigation you're using, drawer or something. Based on that, you have to write the code. So, for example, we are using this stack. If you remember, as you put up a dot, you can see there is nothing too much going on. We can just provide a navigator or a screen. We obviously are interested in the navigator. So, we'll be using this one. So, this is our navigator. So, we're going to go ahead and uh, just close this one just like this. So we have the stack navigator. But as of now, we are not telling it what screen should I move or what should I call my screen? Maybe I want, I would definitely want to have a reference that, hey, navigator dot navigate to this screen, navigator dot navigate to the, the uh, X screen or Y screen. First parameter that it requires is this one, initial route name. What is the name of your initial route? My initial route, I'm going to call this one as home. But as of now, it has no idea that, hey, what do you call home? I need to give it a list of a screen and have to provide exactly this home name that, hey, I'm going to call this particular thing as home. As of now, it doesn't know this. So inside this navigator list, I have to come inside and have to provide the stack screen. So I'll just say, hey, stack. As you can see, there is another option that is a screen. So yes, you can provide as many list of screens as you probably wish to. This can be a self-closing and you can provide as many as you like. I'll go ahead and hit an enter here because this requires a couple of parameters to be passed on. The first, obviously, is the name. What do you want to call this one? So I'll first take care of the home. But as of now, this also doesn't tell that, hey, what should I do with home? What component should I load? So obviously, you have to mention a component that what component you want to load. I want to load the home component. Now, further on top of this, there are a couple of other options that you can provide. So as you can see, uh, navigator screen options. So basically, what this navigator screen option is, uh, there are some 
uh, on some devices, there is a title screen that you want to display that, hey, you have moved on to this screen. Although you can mention this all in while you are actually designing the screen itself, you can hard code it there or bring in some there as well. But sometimes you want to provide that. In that case, this is just optional. You can provide an object inside this object. For example, I want to provide title, header title, header back title. What do you want to call back and all of that? All of this you can pass on. To display them or not, it's totally optional. It's up to you. So we're going to go ahead and provide this title. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and call this one as uh, trending products. All right, you get the idea. Now, this is exactly what you do and what you repeat in every single one. So it is better that we go ahead and remove this and make a copy of this one. That is actually super, super helpful. So I go ahead and say that, hey, this, this one is, we are going to call this one as details. Now, it is not necessary that your component name and your name should match, but it is a good idea that if you match that, uh, it will remove a lot of confusion. So we're going to call this one as details. Option, uh, what do you want to provide? Do you want to provide something or not? That's up to you. Product details. We'll play around them in the second app, but this is what. So now in this just one video, you have learned that how you can actually configure this. We haven't set up our screens yet, but we have actually seen how the home page actually looks like. Let me summarize that quickly. That will help you to understand it a little bit uh, foundational. So first and foremost is you choose that how you want to navigate. You want to navigate in the stack. You want to navigate in a native stack as well. Uh, this is actually a native stack we are using, not the stacks. Uh, you can use the drawers as well. You can use bottom tabs as well. This is exactly how, as you can see, the code is here, the tab navigator, the tab screens, exactly same. Uh, that is why I say learn from not just me, but with me along with documentation to so understand the concepts, not just copy pasting the stuff. Uh, simply in the drawer, if you want to go with the drawer, as you can see, we'll install the drawer. Uh, here is the drawer. And then you see the sample code, draw.navigator, draw.screen. Repeatable, very, very repeatable. We are using native stacks. So as I said, uh, stack.navigator and then this solve. So it's not something that I'm coming up on my own. I'm just referencing the documentation. So we have seen that we actually use the navigation container, which is a wrapper around everything. And then we choose what type of navigation we want to use. All right. Then we, this was nothing. We just were bringing and importing our components that we designed or we are calling them as a screen. This is something really, really optional. You don't need to do this. And this piece of code, we are doing this just for the sake of uh, type checking and the type safety. All we are doing is we are providing a parameter list that home doesn't expect any parameter to be passed on when you navigate to it. But details expect that you provide one parameter at least, and that should be of type string. That is just a type safety. And in order to provide this type safety, we have to ask that, hey, stack, uh, we created this stack by uh, create a native stack navigator. And this, this is just a boilerplate code. You have to have to inject this. Uh, so this is how you do it. All right, uh, quite a lot of stuff, but at least we have learned firmly and understood the details and behind the scene concept, how to read the docs as well as how to implement this. I hope you are enjoying this video. If you are enjoying this video, it would be a great thing if you possibly can share it on LinkedIn or Twitter. I would really, really appreciate. And if you can write some article around this on Hashnode, that would be really, really amazing and would make me personally happy that somebody is not just learning, is contributing to the community via the Hashnode. It would be super amazing for me. That's all for this video. Let's catch up in the next one.